So I don't want to watch a 30 minute video on installing this and I don't think you do either. So. Remove the top four bolts. Remove the three red wing nuts for the vacuum cover. Lift the vacuum cover up, rotate out, lift out. Instructions tell you to find the actual manual, installation manual. You know it's in the box because you're here, right? I will link the actual installation guide manual down below in the description. Remove the blades, use the supplied tool. Once your bolts are removed, use the DeWalt tool to pull out the blade clamp and the blade. Push the spring down, rotate to the next one. Remove the cutter head locking plate. Two Phillips screws, there's Loctite on them. There's a spring underneath, be careful of that spring, you don't lose it. If those screws are on there tight, they got blue Loctite on them. Be careful you don't strip the heads. Watch out for that spring. Remove the handle. Remove the four bolts for the cover. Remove the idle arm spring, tensioner. This one also has Loctite. Remove the two sprockets at the same time. Four millimeter Allen, two bolts, sprockets come off at the same time, remove the V-belt, just pull the tension to one side, watch your fingers, and just roll it off. 24 millimeter nut, use a piece of wood to block the blade for the rotating Shut nut. My pulley was on there pretty tight. Watch the keyway. Make sure you don't lose that. If you don't own a pair of snap ring pliers, order a set on Amazon, run down to Napa. You know, I'm sure they're not more than five bucks if you don't have a pair. Get a pair, or you can use needle nose, but Remove the bushing onto the other side. Move the three bolts for the cover. Remove the two snap rings. Remove the spring on the tensioner. Remove the chain and the sprockets. I just place them in the cover. There is a washer that was behind the right shaft. Mine was stuck to my sprocket. It could be on the shaft. Remove the three Allens. They're five millimeter. Don't remove anything else. Don't remove the Phillips. You pull the box out. Don't pull it out all the way. So on the gearbox side, you can use a piece of hardwood or a brass drift punch from the gear side driving it to the larger bearing on that side there is a snap ring on this side also i removed that just to get it out of the way you're pushing the shaft from the gear side to the larger bearing side that has the larger opening This side has the larger opening. You slide the shaft through. Now you remove the gear. You would think this steel would be harder than a brass drift. That's what these are meant for. But this is no longer a six millimeter like the manual says uh, that 
just doesn't fit. It does look like it might have mushroomed a little bit. So maybe use a chunk of ingrained maple instead, but it now fits a quarter inch socket. Make sure you use a six point. They say this thing can round off pretty easy. Mine came off pretty easy. It's blue Loctite, little dab will do. I don't specify how tight to tighten this thing, but make sure you don't damage the uh, the gear head here. Now this is the OEM style, so I need to remove all of the, the carbide bits. If you have the uh, the smaller version, then you can go ahead and install now. They do supply a Torx bit. You can use an impact. I'm going to do these by hand uh, to remove all of the carbide knives. All 40 carbide knives are removed on reinstallation once it's in there BT goes out align those all that way so you know when you start uh, rotating knives clockwise a quarter turn you know where you started from the countersunk screw and countersunk face is what aligns this to the back part of the head so when you install this you pull the cutter knife forward you screw this in so that it then the countersunk aligns it to seat on the back face of this instead of getting caught on the back face and then you would have some issues. Cleaning the bearing surfaces of dirt and grime. Just going to take some grease off of the gearbox and now that I've cleaned those bearing surfaces I'm just going to add a tiny bit of little grease and I'm going to re put in the snap ring on the stop side. You didn't have to take that side out. So I'm just lifting up the gear side to use a dead blow to tap it in from the other side, from the pulley side. So to check and make sure that is seated, take the snap ring on the pulley side, once that clicks in, then it's seated on both sides. You don't want to go too far on this side. Seated just fine. We're in centered. Now for the fun part, installing 40 cutter heads. Pulling, pulling the knife forward. If you wiggle it side by side, you can tell where it wants to seat. They say 40 around 40 inch pounds. My torque wrench only goes down to 60 inch pounds, so they do say you can tighten them by hand uh, down to where you feel 40 inch pounds is. You tighten them good and snug, they, it feels plenty tight. Once again, you're aligning the knife blades by pulling the knife forward so that it takes the seat on the back of the cutter head by pushing itself into there with the countersunk bolt and not by overlapping and sitting on there. And if you're just loose, you can, you can feel that it wants to go into place when you wiggle it. Now for the fun part. Knife heads are in, ready to put it back together. I'm going to take some of this grease that was sealing this gearbox with this gear drive and recoat the gear because it got wiped off. Gearbox going in. Just give it a good jiggle. Make sure that it's seated. Be able to see on the inside where these arms get seated together. Install your three five millimeter Allens. Reinstall your chain, making sure that the spacer goes on the right side. Keyway slots are lined up. Bring your tensioner up. And hook the spring. Making sure that the roller is seated in between the chain. Install your two snap rings on the end of the sh sprocket shafts. Make sure they click in. This side is done. 
cover goes back on onto the other side. Snap ring is in, pulley spacer, keyway, pulley, 24 millimeter nut, use a block of wood to lock the cutter head. This doesn't have to be too tight at all. Belt. Get the chain and the bolts in the cover just how they were. Install the four millimeter Allen's back on, paint tensioner. Tensioner spring. This side's done. Install the wheel. Do not have to reinstall the cutter head locking mechanism. I am going to reinstall my screws just so that I don't lose them. Reinstall the vacuum shield port, whatever you want to call it. Three red wing nuts. Reinstall the red. Now the answer to the $460 question. That's pretty impressive. Pros and cons, real quick. Of course, it's expensive and not the easiest thing to install. Uh, pros, leaves a practically a finished product. You know, normally I'll sand with the sander with 150, 220, and then I'll hand sand at 220. Uh, this is just ready for a straight hand sand at 220. Uh, no tear out whatsoever, which has been a big issue with running the grains different direction, you know, especially with any kind of curly uh, maple or cherry. There's plenty of spots in here that would have torn out that didn't. Uh, really impressed with that. This Purple Heart has a lot of figure in it. And you can see Hopefully you can see. There's a you know a lot of figure that runs through this board, and this board did not tear out, but it left some pretty heavy fuzzy lifted areas. I'm sure if this was with the regular cutter head, uh, th this would have had a lot of tear out because the other boards are perfect. Not a not a single flaw in anything that might have torn out before. Anyway, very impressed. So the verdict here. Hopefully this is the quick video that you were looking for, that I was also looking for. Have a good one guys. Thanks for watching.